Okay, so next topic is upper GI bleeding. And this is going to be referring to bleeding that occurs in the section of the GI tract that extends from the upper esophagus to the duodenum at the ligament of trites. Now, most of us know upper GI bleeding is usually due to things such as peptic ulcer disease, gastritis. It can also be caused by things such as varices and Mallory Weiss tears like we're going to talk about right here. Now, how do, how do patients present when they have upper GI bleeding? They're going to present with dizziness. They're going to present with lightheadedness a lot of times, as well as the weakness and nausea. But the findings we're going to look for are vomiting blood, also known as hematemesis. Also, melena, which are dark, tarry stools, right? And these patients a lot of times come in on physical exam with abdominal pain, hypotension, and tachycardia. Now, we're going to start off with esophageal varices. How do we diagnose these patients? We're going to use esophagoscopy, okay? But variceal bleeding a lot of times is a life-threatening emergency. So we have to remember, if the patient is acutely bleeding and it's life-threatening emergencies, we always do our AVCs regardless, right? So our first step in that case is going to be fluid replacement with two large bore IV needles followed by fluid resuscitation. And our second step is going to be um, controlling the bleeding medically with vasoconstrictors such as octeotride. So if they ask you what we use to diagnose it, we're going to use esophagoscopy, right? But if the patient has a variceal bleeding that's life-threatening, we're going to fluid replace them with two large bore IV needles, with, and, and then we're going to move to medical therapy with octeotride. If octeotride fails, what are we going to do? We're going to do sclerotherapy. If sclerotherapy fails, what are we going to do? Band ligation. If bleeding still not controlled, once we've gotten to this point, we're going to do something called TIPS. Now, we don't like doing TIPS too often because it has a very bad complication, which is hepatic encephalopathy. And if TIPS fails, we're going to send the patient to surgery. And anytime we hospitalize patients, we have to use prophylactic fluoroquinolones for 7 to 10 days for pneumonia complications. So remember, esophageal varices, it's a life-threatening emergency. So if it's a life-threatening emergency, we're going to first fluid replace them, then start medical therapy with octeotride. That doesn't work sclerotherapy. That doesn't work band ligation. Still not controlled. TIPS with a complication of hepatic encephalopathy possibly. TIPS fails Blakemore tube, and we have to give prophylactic antibiotics with fluoroquinolones for pneumonia complications. Now, if the varices have no acute bleeding, we've diagnosed them and they have no acute bleeding, we can actually give them beta blockers and propanolol is our drug of choice. And if the patient's on a beta blocker and the bleeding recurs, at this point, we're going to give isosorbide mononitrate. And that's what we need to know about esophageal varices. <clears throat> now, Mallory Weiss tear. Mallory Weiss tear is actually usually caused by an increase in intragastric pressure that happens during vomiting, which causes a tear in the mucosa of the cardia and the distal esophagus. Now, Mallory Weiss tears actually usually, they stop bleeding spontaneously. And that's what they're known for. And the diagnosis of Mallory Weiss tear, tear is going to be made by upper endoscopy. And if we made our diagnosis and there's no active bleeding, we just have to observe these patients and give supportive care. But if there is active bleeding, we're going to inject them with epinephrine or cauterize them. Remember, all Mallory Weiss tears, we have to add a PPI to prevent further damage and promote healing, whether they have active bleeding or not. So Mallory Weiss tear, we diagnose them with upper endoscopy, no active bleeding, observation and supportive care. If active bleeding, inject them with epinephrine and both of them get PPIs to, to prevent further damage and promote healing. And the most well-known anatomical predisposing factor for Mallory Weiss tear is going to be a hiatal hernia. Borhoff syndrome, it's also going to happen in the alcoholic, but it's going to happen in the retching alcoholic. They are going to present with dyspnea, epigastric pain, or shoulder pain. We're going to diagnose these differently as because in varices and tears, we're going to do endoscopy. But in Borhoff's, we're actually going to do a chest x-ray. And on the chest x-ray of Borhoff's, it's usually going to reveal a mediastinal or free peritoneal air as the initial radiologic manifestation. We're going to confirm them with a water-soluble esophagram. And this is probably the most asked question on Borhoff's. Water-soluble esophagram is what we use to confirm. 
if the Wardorf soluble study is negative, we can use barium study for be better definition. And remember, barium study does have better definition and it is superior in demonstrating small perforations, but it causes an inflammatory response in mediastinal or pleural cavities. So it's not our primary study. So our primary study, if we see barium or esophagram, is water-soluble esophagram. And only if that's negative and we still suspect it, do we go to barium. Our treatment for Borjavs, we have to give immediate antibiotic therapy to prevent mediastinitis. And we want to surgically repair the perforation. And obviously, just like the others with our ABCs, if there's significant fluid loss, we have to replace the IV fluids. So let's do a quick review. Upper GI bleeding, varices, if it's life-threatening, obviously we're first going to fluid replace them with two large bore IV needles, and we are going to then give medical therapy with octeotride. If they ask a diagnosis, we're going to go esophagoscopy. If the octeotride fails, sclerotherapy. If sclerotherapy fails, band ligation. If still not controlled, tips with a complication of hepatic encephalopathy. If tips fails, we go to a Blakemore tube. And anytime we bring patients to surgery, we have to give prophylactic fluoroquinolones for 7 to 10 days. If there's no acute bleeding, we give propanolol. And if bleeding recurs with propanolol, we add isosorbide mononitrate. And Mallory Weiss tear, we're going to diagnose with upper endoscopy. And if there's no active bleeding, we're just going to give supportive care. If there's active bleeding, we're going to inject them with epinephrine or cauterize them. But whether there's no active bleeding or active bleeding, we, we have to add a PPI to prevent further damage. And if they ask you the most well-known anatomical predisposing factor, it's actually going to be a hiatal hernia. Borjavs is going to be dyspnea with epigastric or shoulder pain, and we're going to diagnose them with chest x-ray. Confirm them with a water-soluble esophagram. If that's negative, we're going to use a barium. Though barium does have be better definition, it has an inflammatory response, so it's not our primary diagnostic tool. And a treatment's going to be antibiotics and surgical repair of the perforation. And remember, if there's significant fluid loss, we're going to replace them with IV fluids. And it's a good overview of everything of these three topics for upper GI bleeding.